immune system types components and diseases related to immune system so as we said immune system is nothing but collection of structures and processes within the body that helps us to fight against any infection any disease or any foreign body that enters into our system so it gives us an indication that there could be a foreign pathogen it could be in the form of virus bacteria parasite and our body needs to distinguish it from the original components and the original cells so as we understand this immunity can be in two types uh, innate immunity or the adaptive immunity innate immunity is one which with you are born so it ensures that general health threats are well addressed acquired immunity is by either the vaccination or by your exposure to a disease and it is generating more specific antibodies against the pathogens so uh, those are the two types of immune system coming on to the innate immunity components of the innate immunity include the stomach acid skins enzymes in the tear skin oil mucus and the cough reflex all of those are part of the Im innate immunity innate immunity is non specific that means it does not protect you against any specific disease or a specific threat it's the general immunity that a person has and therefore innate immunity if it is strong it's better and this also make sure that there are two components interferon and interleucin 1 so interferon and interleucin 1 are the uh, two components which are present in as a part of innate immunity the next is acquired immunity as mentioned it is much more complex to the innate immunity it is acquired by a specific disease or a specific vaccination and certain antibodies are generated in response to those specific disease so let's say uh, the threat which occurs into a body gets neutralized because of the adaptive immunity and uh, it remembers the markers for future so let's say you had one seasonal flu and your body remembers the markers for that seasonal flu now if you are exposed to another seasonal flu which is very very similar to the previous one your body would start to generate the antibodies as a response as an adaptive immunity that you have developed from the previous seasonal flu and this process would start to produce more antibodies and this is a adaptive immune system now the components of immune system are interesting we focus that there are six components of immune system lymph node spleen bone marrow lymphocytes thymus and leukocytes let's understand these one by one so what are lymph nodes they are a small bean shaped structures which actually and uh, actually produce and store um, cells that help you to fight infection or any disease and they are part of your lymph system or what we call as the lymphatic system this consists of bone marrow spleen uh, thymus and lymph nodes so all of those are part of what they are part of the broad lymphatic system and of which lymph node is one of the component so they help us to fight infection and they cl uh, carry clear fluid colorless clear fluid to different parts and different organs of the body and uh, wherever there is a lymph node that region could either be enlarged or sore so those are the actual role of a lymph node the next is the spleen spleen is the largest lymphatic organ or the component of the lymphatic system which is present in the body so as mentioned all of these are components of the lymphatic system the spleen is the largest organ it is present just below the rib and uh, above the stomach so between the rib and the stomach lies the spleen and this is responsible for uh, having WBC or what we call as white blood cells these white blood cells have a capability to fight infection or any disease it also controls the amount of blood into circulation in the body so that is another important role of the spleen it also is responsible for disposal of any damaged cell so all damaged cells uh, should be disposed by the spleen so that is the function of the spleen the next is bone marrow now the inner part of the 
uh, bone the center part of the bone the yellow part is what is the bone marrow this bone marrow is responsible for production of wbc or the white blood cells these are the spongy tissues which are present across the various major bones so hip bone thigh bone uh, stem cells are good example now stem cells are very very important because stem cells if they are derived from the embryonic stage and well preserved they can develop outside the body and they can morph into any human cell which is required so embryonic stem cells are nowadays preserved similar to the blood banks we have the stem cell banks which are there and these stem cells can morph the uh, morph into any of the human cell in later stages and therefore are very very important component the next is lymphocytes now when we focus on lymphocyte lymphocytes are small white blood cells which protect our body against any uh, any disease or any infection and these lymphocytes are b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes so we also call them as b cells or t cells b cells are the cells which make antibodies which protect us from bacterial attack or viral attack into the body T cells actually help to destroy the cells which are already infected. So they are the killer cells. They destroy the cancerous cells, the infected cells. And lymphocytes, I repeat again, can be of two types, B and T. Now T again can be of two types. It can be a killer cell. As I said, it can kill the infected cell. It can kill the cancerous cell or it can be a helper cell. A helper T cells help to determine what immune response should be generated against a particular pathogen. So lymphocytes, B cells and T cells B cells, as I mentioned, I repeat again, those are the antibodies. T cells, again, of two types. Uh, T cells can be killer or the helper cells. Killer cell kill the infected region or the infected cells or the cancerous cell. Helper cell helps to understand what response to make in order uh, of a particular pathogen that has entered into a body. Thymus. The next is thymus. This is the cell or the organ where T cells actually mature. So the lymphocyte T cells maturation takes place in thymus. Interesting to note that thymus is usually big for a child. As the child grows and attains puberty, at that stage, the thymus reduces into a fat uh, with age and is no more there. So as we say, younger children have a greater immune response this is part of the uh, the production due to thymus and this is located below the breastbone so that is what is thymus the next is leukocytes leukocytes are disease fighting wh white blood cells which eliminate or remove the pathogen and they are also important component of our innate immune response system. So very, very important to note the part of innate, the inborn immune response system is leukocytes and they have the disease fighting WBC which are generated for the body and these uh, innate immune response system includes cells like basophil, uh, mast cells, eosinophils. So all of those are part of the immune response system which we have covered in our classes on the types of WBC. Now, what are the diseases that can be seen as a result of weak immune system? If our immune system gets affected, it can lead to allergic rhinitis. Itis is inflammation. Rhinitis deals with nasal infection. So, any kind of allergic uh, nasal issues would be a Sim, sing, uh, signal of weaker immune response system, asthma, eczema, then autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis are examples of autoimmune disorders which are result of uh, impact onto our immune system. Now, these can be diagnosed either through a blood test, a skin allergy test in case of allergic rhinitis, asthma, uh, eczema so those are some of the tests which are performed and in order to fight this immune uh, diseases the autoimmune diseases we have 
monoclonal antibody as one of the preferred methods of treatment now monoclonal antibodies we would be covering in a separate lecture these are simply the antibodies which are made outside the body in the laboratories uh, through vaccinating an animal or another human being and creating cells uh, kind of substance which can have a specific antibody antigen binding and therefore can be used to treat autoimmune disorders uh, also used to treat cancer in certain cases uh, there are other um, other ways of treatment which includes corticosteroids or immunosuppressants sometimes removing the affected organ or sometimes uh, removing the deficiency that is causing that immune system loss is also one of the methods which are seen so this was about immunity what is the types of immunity what are uh, the organs involved in developing or building our immune system so we would be covering many more interesting lectures for you stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead